So provisioning devices, IoT devices, is something that can get tricky when you come to have a lot of these devices. The device provisioning service uh, helps you do that, automate that provisioning of all these devices when they come online for the first time. And Nicole is coming on the show today to show us a demo of, of how that works. And actually, she will be provisioning 100 of devices in a matter of seconds without having to change anything in code. Hey, this is the Interesting Show. I'm Olivier, your host. Uh, Nicole came back on the show today to show us some cool demo on how you uh, deploy or provision devices at scale, like hundreds of these devices, uh, very simply. So, hey, Nicole, thanks for coming back. Yeah, thanks for having me back, Olivier. It's always oh, well, a pleasure. Anytime. You're welcome. Your house. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> we're all family. So, um, yeah, so we're going we're gonna to see a nice demo but before as a preamble. Well, yeah. Let's talk about what is that feature and, and what is DPS solving for our customers, for developers? Yeah, so uh, the device provisioning service aims to help customers really deploy their devices at scale. Mm -hmm. And um, it helps not only just for scale deployments, but also deployments where you have a geo-sharded solution, okay. where you have the same kind of instance of that solution in different regions of the world and you sell a device that you know needs to connect to whichever one has the lowest latency mm -hmm. instead of having to have a SKU for you know West US and a SKU for Europe and a SKU for Australia because nobody wants to manage that mm -hmm. number of SKUs yeah, yeah. you just tell the device go talk to DPS and DPS will figure it out based on where that device actually ended up rather than what SKU it happened to be Okay. So um, there are a couple of other different scenarios mm -hmm. that DPS is super helpful for connecting your devices to the right IoT solution, uh, such as multi-tenancy. So if you are selling your application to a variety of different customers of yeah. yours, you can just set it up so that each customer has their devices go to a specific spot. Oh, interesting. I didn't yeah. think about this scenario. Nice. Yeah. So we, we had some demos of DPS, how that works, preparing an enrollment, various ways of having devices authenticate to DPS. Um, what is it you're going to show today that's different? Yeah, so the last time you had me on the show, I showed how do you set up a single device yes. to talk through the provisioning service. Easy. And that's <laughs> super easy, but it's, you know, anything is easy when you deal with only one device. Yes. Uh, you really show the beauty of how to deal at scale when you mm -hmm. talk about more than one device. And in this case, I'm going to show how to simulate 100 different devices okay. that are going to connect to DPS and get provision to my IoT hub. Let's do that. Yeah, so just a little quick background about yeah. why this is so important is that when you're manufacturing these devices, you don't want to do multiple touches on these devices and you mm -hmm. don't want to have to manage multiple different types of firmware. Okay. So that means that each device, when it goes off, it needs to have generally one piece of unique information or, or two, um, depending on how you define like an identity. Yeah. It needs a unique identity, which is like an ID and a key. Okay. Uh, and then the, otherwise, the firmware that's running on the device, you generally want to be the same. Yeah. So in this case, I'm going to show you my, my lovely simulated toaster mm -hmm. company called Toasters R Us. And Toasters <laughs> R Us generate, you know, it's, every toaster should be the same, right? Yeah. And it should all be running the same. You mean firmware. out of factory, right? Yes. Out of factory. Yeah. yeah. Every, yeah. every toaster should be, you know, come off where I buy a toaster, you yeah. buy a toaster and we swap toasters, it works the exact yeah. same way. But you were saying that they still need to have some piece of unique identity yeah. somewhere that has been put in there by whom? By, 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 yeah, that, that? that generally happens on the manufacturing line mm -hmm. while the initial firmware image is getting flashed on that device. So as in the factory floor, there's generally some type of tool that's used that injects that identity into that device. Okay. And, and can you at this point leverage uh, you know, hardware secure modules, mm -hmm. such as TPM and things like that? Certainly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oftentimes, in fact, those tools are specifically made to inject identities securely into some sort of secure hardware. Got it, so no one can see it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, unfortunately, that's not what I'll be showing you today that's because okay. I am doing simulated devices okay. and I don't have 100 TPMs in my bag to, to get out. <laughs> but in this case, I'm doing uh, simulated toasters that are identified with X509 certificates. Okay. So I've gone ahead and I've generated my X509 certificates and I'm going to use each toaster will have its own unique certificate. Okay. And um, what I did to set this up. They all have the same root though, right? They all have the same root, exactly. Okay. So I had the same signing certificate that uh -huh. if you care to look at my provisioning service that I've got set up, I just called in my master toaster cert and I've already gone ahead and I verified the status. Got it, okay. So I've, I've said, okay, hey, provisioning service, here's the certificate I'm gonna be using for signing the toasters and I've proved that I, Nicole, own this cert okay. so that nobody else can, can claim it and they know that there's, like, it's, it's a valid cert. Okay. Uh, and then I've also gone ahead and linked 
my DPS to this one IoT hub because okay. I just want to get all my toasters online as fast as yeah. possible. You could have done with several of them. I could have done with several if yeah. I'm doing like a geo sharded hub. Uh -huh. uh, but in this case, I just want to get my toasters online, uh, in this case in, in okay. East US, because I'm selling in Boston next week at a toaster trade fair. <laughs> <laughs> Having too much fun with this. <laughs> so, and then I went ahead and I created an enrollment for uh, the premium line of my toasters, yeah. which all will use the master toaster as their signing certificate. Got it. So every toaster that comes through, I've signed that device's cert with my master cert so that that device has been proven as valid when it talks to my IoT application. Okay. I've also set it up where I want all of my toasters to come in. These are actually being sold to a tenant called okay. Contoso. Okay. Uh, I want to make sure that they're up to date, so I give it the latest firmware version of 1.1.2, and then the URL where it can download that okay. version of the firmware from, uh, and just have a use case in there for my own tracking. So that's basically the, the, the famous you know, first time experience today when you turn on a device. Yep. First thing it says is like, I need to be updated. Yeah, and you're like, well, okay, yeah. why are you telling me? Why don't you just go do it? Exactly, yeah. and so that's what TPS allows you to do. Yeah, what it does yeah. is and basically tell that device, you know, when, when you show up at your IoT hub, it will come ready with the list of things you need to go do. Mm -hmm. Uh, and nice. so, you know, just to show there's nothing on my sleeves, yeah. if I go to registration records, there's no device. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> and then if I go to my IoT hub, you know, Toasters okay. RS East, and I go to my devices, there are no devices, no devices. here. If 1S refreshes, you'll be able to see it. Yep. And so now let me go to the VM where I'm running my toasters. Okay. And first I wanted to show you what the script I'm going to run that kicks off my, my toaster mm -hmm. uh, simulation. Mm -hmm. Because what I'm doing is I'm using the exact same simulated device DLL okay. to spin up my toasters. Same code. The exact same code. The mm -hmm. only difference is I'm passing in a different index for which toaster number it is. And that index tells my simulated device which cert to use, essentially because it's all running locally on this VM. Okay. Um, it's not no, but that's, that's one way yeah. to simulate, illustrate the, the idea of a piece of firmware that is always the same, gets the identity from HSM, whatnot, yep. and uses that to authenticate with DPS. Exactly. Love it. So if I run my demo, okay. we'll start kicking off, and you can see the number of toasters goes up. Yep. And in this case, I'm going to be simulating 100 different toasters. And if I go back to my registration records and I refresh, you will see Boom. Boom, toasters. So these toasters yeah. are already starting to show up. And if I go into my IoT hub and, the and order hit refresh. Doesn't matter, right? Because nah. yeah, it, it's so whenever these toasters come online, then we'll register yeah. them. Yeah. So each of these toasters is now enabled. I can load more. Nice. And you'll see that there's just tons of these suckers. Well, let's go into <laughs> toaster 19 because it's a prime it's, number. Yeah. And you'll see that not only did we create this digital toaster, but if I go into the device twin, it's been set up with all the information the tag, that toaster and needs. Exactly. And so on. Exactly. So here's the tag with the tenant nice information. Well. And we can see here's the firmware version that we wanted to have, the firmware URL, and the use case is Breakfast Master Plus. That's so. awesome. Love it. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Is that demo available for people to go play with and, and repro and uh, not yet. Okay. We are trying to put together this so that we can have it, you know, published on GitHub where anybody can take it and run with it. Okay. Um, so as soon as we have it, we're going to yeah. add the link. Yep, exactly. Under this video, perfect. So people can come back, watch the video again. Yep, watch the video again. Enough. Yeah, and go then. through and you know install it so they too can install their mm. own toaster Love simulation. Love it. Uh, one more thing I want to add is that uh, now DPS can uh, can provision edge devices, yes. IoT edge devices. That is so that's pretty. It's pretty solid because when you consider the, the configuration of your device to twin, you can actually consider doing that for edge. As in you prepare deployment for your edge devices, device come online, go to DPS, yep. gets this connection stream for IT Hub, gets a tag that tells it, or property, whatever, tells yep. it which, uh, which deployment you know, to deploy once it's connected to IT Hub, and yeah. off you go. Yeah, um, I didn't show it to you this time, but yeah. it's as easy as checking a box in the enrollment and saying, hey, this device, when it comes in, is going to be an edge device. And then when that device registers to IoT Hub, the rest just magically works. It's, yeah. it's amazing to watch. And, and we'll, we'll have that in another IoT show episode. Sounds that great. Demo. Awesome. Thanks, Nicole. Yeah, thank you, Olivier. Glad to have you. Thanks.